What's the deal with these weird looking pots? It's all about air pruning your plant's roots. Some growers like to use fabric pots, but I like to use these special plastic ones. They're an amazing way to boost production. Air pots train your plants to have a healthier root structure, giving them a survival advantage. Whether it's annual veggies or long-lived perennials, I've learned some tips for success. That includes how to properly assemble an air pot, what types of soil or potting mix works best. How can you keep these things watered? I'll share my pointers in a bit, and I'm also comparing three different brands, the AirPod Pro, the Ultra Oxy Air Pruning Pot, and the ever so popular AirPod by Super Roots. Which is right for you? I'll show how they stack up. To get started though, I want you to know who's sponsoring this video. Nobody, buy what you want, I couldn't care less. If you're new to these air pruning pots, how do they actually work? It's true, they can help to aerate a plant's roots. If you're a plant nerd, or if you've read my book about the cardinal growth parameters for plants, you already know that plant roots need oxygen. But air pruning is about much more. In normal plastic pots, roots grow out until they reach the sidewalls. Then they grow down and start circling. They just grow and grow and keep on circling. For short-lived plants, it's not the end of the world. But if you're growing a woody perennial herb, bush, or tree, this circling sets a plant up for failure. Those roots get all tangled and they never straighten out. They simply get thicker and thicker until they start to girdle the plant. For this reason, many growers prefer bare root plants, especially for things like trees. You just pop it in the ground and the plant generates a new root system in native soil. But these air pruning pots are game changers. They stop the whole root circling thing in its tracks. Plant roots are channeled to these open points. Once the root tips reach the openings, they dry out and terminate. The plant sends out new roots from the center, making a dense fibrous network of roots. And when you finally plant it out, you get an explosion of fresh roots growing in all directions. These are ideal if you don't want to plant right away. You can grow out and train a plant creating good structure without worrying that it will get root bound. That's what I've done with this apple tree. I got a bare root and I've been growing it all season. Once I do finally plant it, I know it won't suffer from root circling. There won't be girdling issues years down the road. These pots are great for high-end nursery stock. They're pretty popular in indoor grow operations. You can even use them to give your peppers or tomatoes a head start on the growing season. This one here is a ready pot. It seemed to do a decent job. I want to share some tips for success. The first tip when looking for an air pruning pot is to get the right material. Look for HDPE plastics. All of these pots are made of HDPE. Some of the cheaper knockoffs use PVC, which is not going to hold up as well. The original Premier brand is the AirPot by Super Roots. AirPot is the trademarked brand. They're extra thick and durable. You can store these disassembled, stacked on a shelf. Then when you need one, grab a base, the right sidewall, and some clips. Assembling an AirPod is pretty easy. You just need to watch for a few things. The top of the sidewall doesn't have holes. This prevents runoff when watering. Place the sidewall flat with the holes pointing down. If you look closely at the base, you'll see that the bottom side is labeled. So be sure not to turn it upside down. Wrap the sidewall tight so you can overlap a row of cones. Then just twist in the clips. Small pots only need one clip. Larger sizes get two. I use AirPods all the time to grow out my perennials. I love them, but my primary complaint is that they can be expensive. They are a decent investment though, because you can use them again and again. So other than the price, I really like them. Last year, I wanted an even larger size. This led me to discover AirPod Pros sold by Grower Max on eBay. These are not the original AirPod brand. They're still constructed pretty well. The clips are different and so is the base design. The plastic is fairly thick, although the side holes are a little smaller. Wrapping up the growing season, I wanted an even larger air pot. Why stop at 10 gallons? I wanted 20 gallons. Well, here in the US, I wasn't even seeing that option from Super Roots. This led me to my third air pruning pot design. I found these Ultra Oxy air pruning pots at a pretty reasonable price. 
I went with the 20 gallon version, which sports a 25 inch base. Design wise, these pots are a step down from the others. The plastic feels a little thinner. The smaller holes have sloppy plastic ridges on the inside. All of the rows of cones are perforated. The base seems very sturdy at this size, but I don't like this bottom center cup. This is sure to encourage root circling. So I'll need to snip that piece off before planting. Some things you can fix. You can plug up the top row of cones. You can try to drill out the holes if you don't have anything better to do. But my biggest concern was something else. For a 20 gallon pot, Working with trees, these sidewalls are just too short. 12 inches doesn't cut it. Keep in mind, the base is inset, and if you want this to sit stably, you need to raise the base a full two inches up. That gives you very little planting depth. But I discovered a hack. The Ultra Oxy air pruning pots have a seven gallon option with 16 inch sidewalls. My math told me that I might be able to use two sidewalls to make one extra long sidewall that would fit the 25 inch base. My gamble paid off and I was able to create this massive air printing pot which makes for a pretty nice upgrade. With all of these pots, removing a plant is super easy. Just detach the clips, then peel back the sidewall and pop off the base. If you've allowed enough time for the roots to fill out, you should have a nice dense root ball that holds together but is also free of root circling. This young apple tree was just starting to get there, but now I can pot it up into this gigundous air pruning pot. What type of potting mix works in air pots? I recommend a peat-based mix. It can have some perlite and composted wood products, but I avoid high amounts of bark. A heavy bark mix will have poor water retention. Of course, peat moss isn't the best once it dries out, and these air pots can dry out faster than other pots. When that happens, the water runs out those holes on the side. So I find it helpful to add vermiculite to my mix. Cocoa or core fiber can also be a great way to enhance water absorption. These make it easier to rehydrate the mix. These pots make a mess at first as you fill them, so lay down a tarp. Then firmly press in a base of mix. Next, you need to tightly pack the mix into the sidewalls. You should see the mix coming all the way to the edges. This guy's all potted up, but you'll note that I left some space at the top. This helps to catch irrigation water. On a small scale, these are easy to hand water, but for large scale operations, you may want to look into drip irrigation. Because of their design, air pruning pots are not as prone to overwatering. Just be aware that you may get more nutrient runoff. I don't use air pruning pots in every situation, but I do recommend them. If you're investing resources into a long-lived plant, air pruning the roots is totally worth it. At the same time, if you're struggling to keep your vegetable garden watered, I suggest looking into sub-irrigated wicking beds. Check my channel for more info on various self-watering systems. And stay tuned for my two-hour documentary on how to move a 26-gallon air-pruned potted plant. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you to supercharge your plants. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'd like to wish you happy gardening. Turn it off.